Hi, can I ask in English, please? Absolutely. But I do understand Hungarian, so please answer in Hungarian. Should I? Yes, please. Allow me to answer in English and Hungarian. Okay. Can I do that? Yes. Thank you. How do you control your ego? So I find it very difficult. Uh, you were talking about modesty, um, but yeah. I find it very difficult to forgive people who hurt me. And I think it's my ego that stops me from doing it. All right. So you want to control your ego, right? Yeah, because it always comes. It plays kind of an important role. Sure. So I'm asking you to put your ego right into my hands. I can't do it. Why? Because I can't hold it. Is it that heavy? No. So what's wrong with the ego that you cannot put it right in front of me on this table? Why? Because I don't know where it is. Hey, oh my gosh, how about Google Maps? It doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help. Why? How so? I mean, those guys, you know, they really map everything. Even the sky. Did you know that? I think, yeah. All right. So how come your ego is never found? I think it's within me. Where? I mean, do we need a physician? No, it's in my head. It's in your head. And which part? Can we have an operation somewhere? <laughs> Which part? In is there unconscious part, maybe? Uh-oh. <laughs> unconscious. Or maybe you could tell me where's my ego, because I have no idea where it's Do you think I know that? <laughs> but there's something I can share with you. You will never find it. If you meditate in the way we teach, and you ask, what is this, or what am I? After a while, after all your ideas, all your answers are gone. Only the question remains. And when you experience the question only, then you can experience where the question comes from. Until then, all your answers are directed outwards, directed towards some kind of thought, emotion, past, present, future, something, a mental phenomenon. But when that stops, then your illusions stop. Then your ego doesn't exist. Because originally, it's not there. So when the sixth patriarch, Hui Nang, says, originally nothing, that's what he meant. Originally, no ego. Originally, no I. No life, no death. So what you're saying is the ego is just an illusion that uh -huh. we portray, that we project? Yes. And what is healthy, because now I, I, I gave you the essential point, which is almost useless in terms of practical application in your case. But it's not useless. It's just a very small but fundamental vantage point which is indispensable for forgiving or forgetting or managing those relationships that were hurtful. So first of all, basic victimology. How did you contribute slash participate in that event which hurt you? Now you see that, then the absolute nature of your perpetrator is gone. It becomes relative. So what did you do to make that happen? So then you see your own hand in it, your own contribution to it. And when that's done, then uh, your perpetrator is just a contributor just like yourself. Then you're not a victim anymore. You're acting out your karma with the help of another person. It's different, right? Yes. So then you stop blaming another because you took part in it as well. But I find it difficult to see my role in a conflict. That's why I'm teaching you this practice. Do you think it's easy? I mean, have you seen that on my forehead? <laughs> Folks, it's easy. No, I never put that here. It would be false. It's easy to blame other people, and it's very difficult to look within yourself and say, OK, it might be my fault too. Absolutely, but that's the way. If you but something dare stops to do me that, from doing that, you know? If you, yeah. It's your self-defense. You don't want to change your notion of yourself. I was a victim. Somebody did this to me. Excuse me. Even worse, more difficult, reverse the question. Because anything traumatic, you try to kind of push that away. And then you ask yourself, if I wanted that, if I had asked for that, how would I have done that? It's a reverse engineered thought, it seems. But no, it actually reveals how you did that. And how important is forgiveness? Important is forgive, but don't forget. 
Because if you forget, if you try to erase that, then you repress your memory. Don't do that. Just always when you remember, there is forgiveness because you can see cause and effect. When you see cause and effect, forgiveness happens by itself. If you don't see your karma as empty, in, in other words, made by you and the other person or persons involved, then there's still wrong view. Then you don't see your own hand in it. Don't see their own contribution to it. Then you repress the memory. So dare to remember, forgive, but don't try to forget. It will be there with you for the rest of your life. But if your relationship changes to that, then even that experience will help you. Your suffering will become your resource. If you meditate, you develop genuine compassion based on that. That's how you can do it. That's how you can take your own contribution away, late for later, so that you would never do that to yourself again with the help of another person. All right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm a secular, secular person, and well, I, I think I come from a secular country, which is but, which is India. India. Um, Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> but I think in Western society, people find it very difficult to accept other faiths, uh, and I've been ridiculed, and I've been also find myself in conflict, especially with the Christian Church. Um, I've had people try to convert me, try to do everything to mm -hmm. me, but I haven't, I find it arrogance and I find it, I get angry at sometimes when they ridicule my faith. How do I handle such situations? I Does your faith contain anger? No, it doesn't. So then why do you become angry with them? But when they put me down. That's you, it's not your faith. So again, it's my ego. Of course. They cannot hurt you. They can hurt your ego. <coughs> but when they tell me that, well, your God doesn't exist, I've had people tell me this. Yeah, but you exist. That's enough. <coughs> they shouldn't deal with your God. They don't understand that. They understand only their own. So why do they deal with yours? So why can't they be accepting like I am? Because it's the limitation of their own consciousness. It's not written in any faith to ridicule and despise other creeds and, re and religions. It's their own limitation. Two chances. You try to emphasize that part of their religion, loving kindness, neighborly acceptance, whatever, which is in their code, but they don't use it. Number one, possibility. But most of these, they're not open to that. And the other thing is you can walk away. And don't go back there because you don't have to. Or don't associate with those people who do this to you. You don't have to. Dare and be brave enough to terminate these kinds of relationships that seem, at least in the short run, immutable and incorrigible. So don't, don't follow that. You don't have to prove yourself. If you want to prove yourself, you have a problem. Soon you find somebody who doesn't believe you. Okay, thank you. Believe in yourself. Believe in your true self, not your ego. In your own true nature. You have that experience, no one can take it away from you. No one. Whatever they think and say, what does that matter to you? All right? Thank you. You're welcome.